Ja, I wish you could have saw all the comments you got on the YouTube about your birthday. Get out of here! Just, just look, hey, look up your camera. Look at the camera. Hey, hey! Why do you have your hand sitting on my head? Right here. Why do you have your arm resting on my head? Three years old, nothing's changed. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. I'm pretty excited because today's coffee is one of my all-time favorites. Well, good morning, guys. It is a lovely, calm, and quiet day here in Los Angeles. I don't know if I should be alarmed by that or I should be excited about that. But I do know I have a great vlog today. And uh, this is the one I told you guys about the other day that I kind of messed up. So we're going to go do it today. And in a way, I was telling Lennard, I'm kind of glad I messed it up because it gave you a chance to see it from a different light as to what we're going to how I'm gonna present it today. And it also falls in line with that old story I tell you guys every once in a while. I'm like, I love sometimes walking by stuff not knowing what it is, and then at a later time finding out what it was, and you're just like, I'm kind of blown away sometimes by it, because I'm like, it's so odd that I was attracted to walking down that street, or parking in that place, or you know, taking that route every day and then we find out it has some sort of historical significance, so it's ought to be a lot of fun. Lennard and Jasmine are at Velveteria, if you guys remember when I went to the Velvet Painting Museum. I think they were going to do that first, and they were going to come up through here and we're going to meet up, so they're going to go with me. So it ought to be a great day. Well, look who it is. We're all together again. Hey! <laughs> Even this one. And you guys remember when I was here the other day, I told you I found out later from Lennard that we had missed something. And what I didn't realize was that when I was here with all this art, this was actually this was actually the house where Phil Hartman was murdered, right up in that room. I'm kind of glad I didn't know it because I was able to show you the grounds and we could appreciate it in like a different light, but I didn't realize it because every time I'd ever seen anything about this story and about his murder, they never um, showed the full house or never that I could see. They always just zoomed in on that window. It's a pretty sad story. Um, you know, Phil kind of came to prominence in um, the Pee Wee Herman days, if you can believe that. It was like, <clears throat> Phil was actually, originally, his, his first job was he was a graphic designer. And he was responsible for like a lot of album art in the 70s, like the Fireside um, Chat, those like comedy albums, and Poco, and different people like that. Um, that's what he did, he designed album covers. And um, when he was like 26, he went to the Groundlings to see a show, and believe it or not, like he was blown away by it, and actually like started shouting out in the audience, and started like kind of getting on stage and performing with the group and they, the director of the show was like there's a guy out here that's like up on stage and he's really funny like people like him he's getting laughs and Phil joined the Groundlings the very next day and it was crazy he just kind of like it took over his life being funny was everything and he had always done voices when he was a kid um, but he just I guess he never really had that performing bug until he saw that. And they said he was fearless. He was one of the only people that you could ever see perform at the Growlings who was just not afraid to be any character. You know, he would, started doing commercials. He started auditioning a ton. He got married to an artist um, in 1979. And, uh, or I mean, when he was 29, he married this lady, but the problem was like he was so dedicated to wanting to be an actor that he just couldn't be a great husband, at least give her the attention that she needed. So that marriage actually didn't really work out, but um, he started dating this woman um, 
who had changed her name to Bryn, and Bryn was a beautiful woman who was trying to be an actress as well. She was trying to be a model. And uh, they just met and kind of fell in love right away. She had always been trying to make a career for herself, but when it didn't happen, she had kind of let drugs and alcohol take over. And she had, at various times in her life, went through depressions and kind of let cocaine rule her life. Um, she would come out of it and everything, but when she met Phil, it was kind of a stable moment for her. And unfortunately, he was becoming so popular over time and so famous. Like I said, he got his start as a writer for Pee Wee Herman. He and Paul Rubens kind of came up with the idea of Pee Wee, and then they were the writers on the very first HBO Pee Wee special that was filmed in Roxy. And then when they made um, Pee Wee's Playhouse, he became Captain Carl. When they did Pee Wee's Big Adventure, he was the co-writer on it. His career really started taking off, and uh, he and Bryn moved to New York. He became a cast member of Saturday Night Live and went on to do some of the most memorable characters on Saturday Night Live history. So Bryn's role in life basically would become Mrs. Phil Hartman. And this would eventually take its toll on her because she would start getting really jealous of how much he was working and how successful he was when she couldn't really get much more than a occasionally a modeling job or a one line in a movie and Phil actually did try and help her he made a variety show and actually put her in it but the variety show was never picked up and over the years they would report friends would say that Phil would tell them that she had taken swings at him or thrown things at him and gotten kind of violent and uh, his ex-wife even said when their first child was born that uh, she sent like a congratulatory letter and Bryn sent back a really nasty letter in return threatening her and when she called Phil and said, do you know who you're married to? He said, oh yeah, you should have seen what she wanted to send you. So over time, it seems like there was just a love loss that um, they just loved each other as a married couple but they were never really intimate and uh, Phil would tell people that it was hard to want to make love to someone who was your enemy and his career was really successful he was doing jingle all the way he had done um house guest with sinbad he was on news radio and he was even named the honorary mayor of encino so the reason i keep showing this buca de beppo is because it does actually play somewhat an integral part in the murder of phil hartman at least the night of because the night of May 28th, 1998, Bryn came down here and met with a friend, had some drinks at the bar, um, apparently had had a few drinks because by the end of the night, she her blood alcohol level was over the legal limit. She, they found cocaine and Zoloft in her system and she basically left here and decided to go home. And at some point from 9.45 in the evening, to 3 a.m. something happened during that time that made her decide to kill Phil Hartman and it wasn't premeditated they had plans to go out of town whether it be at the restaurant earlier in the day something had happened that influenced Bren to come home and kill Phil Hartman in bed and uh, she had just eaten at Buca de Beppo had been drinking with friends came home and then Somewhere around 3 a.m., she walked up into their bedroom, saw Phil in bed, grabbed a gun, and went and shot him three times. And Phil, apparently, as he got more successful, he was able to indulge in more um, kind of toys in life. His ex-wife would say he loved toys, and he viewed, you know, boats and uh, cars and even guns, he viewed them as kind of a more complicated toy. And so he had fancied himself a uh, marksman. He would go to the shooting ranges quite a bit. And some would even say that he 
um, had bought that gun for Bryn and that he would take her to the shooting ranges, but I don't know. There's something inside me that tells me, being somebody who's been with someone before who has had instabilities and histories of acting violent, I would hope that he wouldn't have went down that route, um, but in the end it really doesn't matter either way. Um, she found a gun, came home, and assassinated the great Phil Hartman, and it is really heartbreaking because <clears throat> I feel like Phil is somewhat forgotten. Um, you don't hear people talk about how brilliant he was, not like John Candy or or Bill Murray or the Dan Aykroyds, and he was every bit as good for somebody who only had a 14-year career. But uh, Bryn killed him, and then what she did was she actually got in her car and drove back up in Encino, went across Ventura, and she had a friend that lived in that neighborhood, and she actually told that friend what she had done. So the friend and her got in the car, and they came back over to the house over here. And uh, the friend went in, saw that Phil was dead and called the police. And uh, when the police arrived, the first thing they did was they saw Phil was dead, they called the paramedics, but then they also grabbed both children who were in the house when Phil was killed. They grabbed both children, took them outside, and as they were escorting the children out of the house, Bryn went upstairs with another gun, laid down beside Phil in bed and shot herself. this beautiful home that we looked at the other day that we didn't know that it was what it is we didn't I didn't know I mean like I said all I had ever seen in anything was was this window and the top of this roof and uh, now you guys know the story the last home of the grateful Hartman and uh, just so sad that he was taken away so young um, Every once in a while, Joe Rogan on his podcast will talk about how brilliant it was to be with Phil Hartman, and and it was pretty hard, you know. It was a little bit of a transition for Phil because he was a guy who, you know, was so great with voices. He was known for being on The Simpsons and Saturday Night Live and everything, and uh, when he would switch over to doing TV and sitcoms and stuff, he said like it's it was so much harder because he said you couldn't hide behind the blanket of of a character like being Frankenstein or being somebody else you had to be you to an extent and this is where it all ended for Phil God rest your soul Phil Hartman you're one of the greatest ever I'm really glad that Arg pointed this out to me the other day because I honestly like like I said I, I never really saw all I ever saw when I would watch documentaries or any kind of um, examination of this case was that window up there and sometimes they would show the front door, but I never really saw the grounds and it's kind of cool the people that live here now, I don't really know who it is, um, they've tried to change the environment here and uh, I don't, I, when I saw the footage I didn't see any of this stuff in the yard, none of these sculptures or anything were here, but to look at it uh, and when I was here the last time I never had a creepy or eerie feeling um, but this is where it all ended and there's the back uh, there's the back door to the top of that room you know one of the things that kind of dawned on me as we were leaving Phil Hartman's house and I was showing you the back um, stairwell and entrance to where the room was where he was murdered something stuck out at me and it's nothing that's been said but it's something I picked up on is that it dawned to me when I saw that staircase that led up to the back and realized that's the way that you would have entered that room I kept reading and in every documentary that I've watched ever since that happened one of the things that I always remember them saying is they always say she went to Phil's bedroom and I always just took that to mean her bedroom as well, but I think after seeing the house, seeing that he lived above the, the garage and that's where he was murdered, makes me think that he probably had his own bedroom and that he probably, they weren't sharing a bedroom anymore. 
I could be wrong, but that's just something that I picked up on that seemed, I don't know, it just seemed that way to me when we were leaving and I showed you guys in that last shot the, uh, the back staircase. I don't know, if you know anything about it, let me know. Since I was in the neighborhood, we decided to swing by where I did my very first vlog, the Clark Gable estate, the old ranch. You can see it right through there, that famous picture of him with his last wife under that little uh, trellis thing. Just wanted to pay my respects since we were in the neighborhood. Gonna go eat at Domingo's again. We're moving out here. A new house and a college fund. Well, since we were in the neighborhood, we decided to get something to eat. And I talked him into Domingo's. So we're going to Domingo's again. I gotta have this earlier this week, which is awesome. No complaints out of me. I'd say we wiped out this food. Oh. <laughs> yeah. A lot of happy faces right there. <laughs> well, since the whole gang went to Velveteria today, and Velveteria was for some reason not open, not answering the phone, not open, I kind of felt guilty they didn't get to see anything, so I'm taking them around on some kind of local sites that were in the area where we were. So I didn't show you, but we went to the uh, the mini Graceland. I showed them that since we were kind of in the area, and now we're at the Karate Kid apartment building. And then we're gonna go to the Wayne's World house after this. So this vlog turned into a little bit more than just Phil Hartman. And look, the field that Daniel would have been running through, they're actually building apartments there now. So that fence that he would have jumped over, that was right over here, it's getting to the point where uh, it's gonna be unrecognizable pretty soon. Down there would have been the dumpsters where he did the, uh, I hate this bike, I hate this stupid bike. This is where he would have kicked the door open. There would have been his apartment right there. Well, here's our next stop. Wayne's house. Wayne Campbell's parents' house. Where the uh, cable access show. And uh, we would have seen all those memorable moments where the guys were out here playing street hockey. And the uh, public access Winnebago would have been sitting right there. We had to come see this since we were in the neighborhood. And quite possibly what might be our last stop of the day. The Brady Residence. That's right. When I take people on a tour and they get screwed out of Velveteria, I show them the good houses. I show them the good stuff. Mike Brady's place, Alice, Carol, Greg, Peter, Bobby, Cindy, Marsha, and Jan. And don't forget Tiger. Wow. I was telling them on the way here, last time I was here, I broke my thumb on the way here before I came here, and it still hasn't healed up. So you guys are getting to see quite a bit today. Well, gang, I learned a valuable lesson today. Sorry about all the audio issues in the vlog today. I learned that even though you have an omnidirectional microphone, as a vlogger, you always have to have it pointed directly at your mouth. I had it pointed outward, I was picking up way too much car noise, if the, uh, the audio sounded a little bit weird, it's because I actually had to go back and re-record all the audio tonight while walking the streets of Los Angeles so that I could get um, air ambiance and so that you could actually hear it because when I came home and started editing the video, I was sitting in my apartment about ready to punch a hole through the wall because there was so much car noise every time it drove by that you couldn't hear what I was saying, so I had to re-record everything. But I hope that um, this was a special vlog for you. It was definitely a special one for me because, like I said, um, in a weird way, it was kind of nice 
seeing it the other day, not knowing what it was, and enjoying the house for how beautiful it was, and then to find out that it had a not so beautiful history, and to get to go show you guys that side of it today. Um, and I hope you enjoyed all the little extras we threw in as well, going to Clark Gable's house, going to the Brady Bunch house, going to Wayne's World house, going to the Karate Kid apartment building. Those were all just a few extras. Um, I really felt bad that my friends drove up here to go see Velveteria because they had seen my vlog and they've been super excited and this was the second week in a row that they got um, screwed out of seeing it. So while we were eating, it just popped into my head. I said, you know what? Maybe I'll bring up a few places that are close by that I can remember where they're at and see if they want to go. And we even hit the mini Graceland. Um, I didn't show you guys in there because I literally just vlogged it and I figured you don't want to see everything you've just seen, but it was a great day. And um, I hope you guys will be back tomorrow. I don't know exactly what's going to happen tomorrow, but those are some of the most fun days sometimes. So please give this video a thumbs up. Please like it, subscribe, tell your friends, pass it along, do whatever it is that you do to let people know what you like and uh, help your old buddy Jordan out. Um, I appreciate you guys watching and I hope this wasn't too much of a downer for everybody. Um, like I said, I feel like Phil Hartman's somebody who in a weird way kind of gets forgotten. You don't hear pe many people talking about him, you don't hear many people um, talking about how great he was, remembering the things that he did. And uh, I definitely wanted to. So, Phil Hartman, wherever you are, I hope you're resting in peace. And um, God bless you, my friend. From your old pal Jordan the Lion and your old pal Jaw, have a great night.